Woo! Who's ready for some fun? So in front of me is an assortment of parts that I'm hoping will go together to become a functional supercharger. And functional in the sense that it'll move, it'll move air. It's not really going to compress air like an actual supercharger would be, but it should look like one and work as a fan. This video is brought to you by Deepcool and their new LS series all-in-one liquid coolers. Deepcool's LS AIOs are offered in 120, 240, and 360 millimeter variants, delivering outstanding cooling performance with spectacular ARGB lighting. Deepcool's fourth generation pump design offers maximum performance with increased power while maintaining low operational noise. Helping to keep those operational noises low and those performance numbers high are the Deepcool FC120 dynamic bearing PWM fans. These fans can be daisy chained together to simplify RGB and PWM signals into one single wire, helping to improve the cable management of your next build. The LS series pump cover contains an infinity mirror design to give your build mesmerizing visual effects, and the pump cover can be rotated to ensure everything is positioned just as you like it. And if you're not a fan of the stock Deepcool logo, the LS series coolers also come with a blank plate that you can customize however you see fit. So click the link in the description below to pick up your new Deepcool LS series AIO for your next build, available in both black and white. Now this is actually something I've wanted to do for quite a long time, but I just never really sat down and put in the time to design it until I saw a tweet from Techno. He sent me a link to this ultra quiet roots blower type fan on the Hackaday website. And the project's being run by Open ERV and I read through it and it seemed really cool. And I looked at the little picture or the little drawing and I was like, man, I should make something like that. And then throughout the process, one thing led to another. And then I found myself Googling top fuel dragster blowers or superchargers and I was like, no. I need to make something like that. So this is what I came up with. I started with the housing. Now, I knew that I wanted the, the supercharger to cool a 120 millimeter radiator. So that kind of drove the whole design of the, the supercharger itself. So I made it, essentially they made the bottom 120 millimeters to cover the radiator. Also, I figured a radiator on the bottom of this would be perfect because in real life, you normally have a, a heat exchanger or an intercooler underneath there that takes the heat out of the, the, the compressed air before it enters the engine. In our case, it's going to hopefully, the supercharger air will hopefully cool our radiator, but it'll it'll give that aesthetic that we're going for. Now, the next thing I tackled were the the rotors. Now, there was two choices. I wanted to, I had, I was, it was either gonna be roots or twin screw, and I decided to go with roots because it kind of looked more like the picture. And then as you can see, I went with straight lobes versus twisted lobes, uh, mostly because it was just easier to design them, and uh, the print was super easy for this this style rotor now that being said if you want me to you know design maybe a twin screw or some twinted or twinted or some twisted roots rotors just let me know um i'd be more than happy to do it if it's something you want to see and we can we can see which one actually does better in this little setup we got if you know if it works now to mount these rotors in this housing i'm just using some eight millimeter vented pullout dowels i'm using vented essentially as a keyway in this case it's it's going to maybe interlock better with the rotor so it doesn't kind of want to spin around it and then to you know let everything ride as smoothly as possible i'm just using eight by 22 by seven ball bearings that are mounted in the back of the case here but now that i had most of the functional parts sorted i needed a way to I need some gears, and gears are always fun to design, but pro tip, if you're designing something, never really, never design something you can just download. So I headed over to McMaster Car, and I looked for some worm gears that I thought would work. I downloaded them, made some modifications, printed them out, and they came out perfectly. So there you go, McMaster Car is a great place to find parts you need it. Also, it has 3D models that sometimes come in very handy for stuff like this. Now driving this whole <laughs> abomination, I knew the A12 X25 wasn't gonna cut it. We know it just doesn't have the torque to do it, but luckily for me, I just happened to have this motor that I purchased on Amazon pretty cheaply a while back. Now the input shaft of this motor only spins at 1000 RPM, but it has an integrated gearbox. So it's gonna have all the torque we need to hopefully spin this thing. I'm hoping that 1000 RPM is gonna be enough to get some air moving through there to show that this thing is functioning at least, but this, this should do it. Now coupling this motor to one of the rotors to drive and then essentially drive the other one, I decided to use a spline coupling mostly because it made mounting this motor easier and it was really easy to print. And that's pretty much it. That's that's the functional thing. Obviously I have the, the end cap to seal everything off. It's also got the motor mount and those bearings we were talking about. This is where the motor's gonna go drive that um, powered rotor or the, the one rotor, which then will drive the other one with the gear set. And just to make it look more like a top fuel dragster, I added this little intake that's gonna go on top, mostly just because it looks cool. That's, that's essentially it and to seal everything up as much as possible because I don't think we're gonna be pushing a lot of air through here, especially only a thousand RPM. 
I did my, I did the classic print some gaskets with a TPU. And then after I got all this done, I remembered, uh, yeah, the radiator part. This at the time wouldn't connect to the radiator, so I had to, and I had to build this little plate. So this is an adapter plate that will mount to the radiator, and then the supercharger will be mounted to it like this with a gasket. And as you can see, I've already went through and uh, put a bunch of inserts in here, and I printed all this out of PETG. Normally, I just do PLA because it's super easy to work with, but I figured PETG would give us a little more strength for this thing if we ever want to want to kick it up a notch or. You know, just in case, just just give it the best chance of success. So let's put this all together and see if it functions. So on the rotor, I've put in the dowel almost all the way. As you can see, there's only enough it's sticking out that it's going to interface with the bearing. I don't want it poking too far through the bearing because this is the side that's on the back side of the housing here. And I want it to ride it on the bearings but not touch the back wall. So as you can see, that's how they're gonna go. They seem to spin pretty good. The clearances aren't super tight. They're about as tight as I can get them while making sure I don't cause any rubbing. Uh, so we'll see how well it functions, but it seems like they they mesh together quite well. I think we'll put them in the, the cap side first with the bearings and the gears and then insert that in there because getting them aligned as we install them is going to be key to making sure it operates as well as it can. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So this is why I made the coupler the size that it is, because it can slide right in there, like that. And just need a screw long enough to reach that dowel and pull it out a little bit. Okay. The motor. Just like that. Before we put it in the housing, let's just, let's just see if it can turn it as is before we worry about installing the rest of this stuff. 12 volts. Okay. Oh, 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 that was way louder than I thought. So this side's not supported, so it kind of flaps all the way around. Okay, it should, it should work. Let's put it in here so it's more supported. That's actually not as loud as I thought it would be. <laughs> okay, let's bolt, let's bolt this thing together. This is exciting. So just to visualize air movement, if there is any. I think I feel some, but before we go all crazy with this, let's just see if it's pushing enough to move these pieces of paper. <laughs> it's working, it's working. Let's put the rest of the stuff on. Wow, 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 wow. I, I was hopeful this thing was gonna work, but it works so much better than I thought it would with this, this little thousand RPM motor on there. And it's so much quieter than I thought it would be. We've had a lot of gear fans on the channel over the years and it's, and those are really loud. And I figured two gears, plus you got intermeshing rotors that weren't gonna be perfect, so they might touch each other a little bit, but it really doesn't seem to be the case. They're almost, I almost can't feel at all any, any touch between the two, so it's not, it's just, wow, I'm just amazed. So since, you know, the fan showdown's a big thing on the channel, I think it's only fair that we should put this thing through all the fan showdown tests to see kind of where it would stack up. You guys are all familiar with the fan showdown, so, the numbers this thing generates will give you a good idea of how well it's actually doing. news it has survived all the testing the thing still still works it's fascinating so i did uh we already discussed how loud this thing is so i went and took a db db measurement of the fan and it is very loud 85 dba around 85 
When it was on the wind tunnel, the feet per minute of airflow put out for this thing was 376, which would have put this in 34th place if this was something somebody would have submitted. But I'm sure all of you want to know how well this actually cools a radiator because something like this kind of looks like it was, uh, well, it, I guess it was designed for a radiator, but how, how well does this do? So what I did is I was going to use my 120 millimeter EK radiator for this thing. <laughs> Got everything mounted up, filled it up with water, and it just leaked all the way through it. At some point, unbeknownst to me, I had screwed some, uh, evidently some fan screws a little too far in there, puncturing the, the water lines, a great design choice. And yeah, I didn't notice that until it started raining. So instead I had to use a 240 millimeter radiator with just this mount on one side. And for comparison, I ran that same radiator, same setup with an A12X25. And I ended up mounting this. I, I ran the water cooling test on my old school test bench with the 7700K at 4.9 gigahertz, but I had this mounted on a case that was side panel open on top. So essentially the, the compressor blew air down into the case and is open to the void. There was no fan underneath. And I ran the A12X25 and this root style blower fan the same way for about 30 or so minutes. And the A12X25 had an average temperature of 75.8 and this thing managed 81.8. So yeah, this thing did lose, but it, it didn't throttle. So given the fact that it didn't thermally throttle, I think that's amazing. And the, the motor on this thing is only a thousand RPM. If we had something more, this thing's been sitting back there for a long time. So this, <laughs> I forgot I had this. This is my Traxxas, Traxxas Rustler. I've had this thing for like almost like 10 years at this point. I've used this thing quite, quite a lot over the years and it's been kind of sitting back there in disarray, just chilling. I might have to put it back together to test it out. But as you can see, I've, I replaced a lot of parts over the years that I've just broken. Uh, one of the things I replaced on this thing that I broke was the motor. And I now have a Castle Mamba old school brushless motor that I think might have the torques. The, why do I keep saying that? Torque enough to spin this and spin it very, very quickly if it still works. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be interesting to know if I have a battery that's been around this long and still works. But for the time being, I can set this to 3S voltages. Okay, we'll see if this thing actually powers up. If it, if it still powers up, we're about to have some fun. We're gonna test this thing to failure. So the ESC fan works, it does make noise. It's flashing a yellow light, I don't know if that's good. Uh, I don't know how to make this thing go. I don't know, I gotta see if I can find their controller. One second. <laughs> and the biggest smooth brain move I've ever made, I kept this thing, this broken RC car, but I, at some point over the last five, six years, I threw away the controller because that makes so much sense. So I don't have a way to make this motor function. I don't have, I tried to bind it to my DX6, but the Spectrum and Trax is nah, not really compatible. Um, what I did find was Amazon has an ESC tester or servo tester that will give us functionality over this motor to see if it works. And they said they can deliver it today. So we just got to kind of wait until that shows up. Uh, <laughs> it's here. So now we'll see if this wait was worth it. Hello darkness, my old friend. Hey, welcome to the next day. As you can see, that didn't really work uh, as intended. It did make the motor spin, but it just wasn't full speed. So the new controller's here. Let's break something. I got my OSHA approved setup here and we'll just see what, uh, uh, how it goes. Oh no, we're slipping. <laughs> That's terrifying. The motor mount cracked, but that was full speed. I'm gonna back up a little bit. Are we bound up a little bit? Oh, this is getting ready to just go flying. Bad idea, bad idea. Oh, oh, oh. Well, out of every possible way this could have failed, I didn't think that it would just be the motor. 
came off. Now, I, I pulled this off because uh, I thought that the motor had burned off, so I just ripped it off since we saw it was cracked. But this thing still works completely fine. The only thing that happened is it was so crooked and off-center that it was just binding up when it was trying to spin. The supercharger, fully functional. Doesn't sound like anything came loose or cracked or is rubbing. It actually, it almost sounds like it's, it sounds better, like it wore itself in. And it was running full speed for just a split second before my little crappy mount gave way. So I think if we put a new mount on here that was more robust for this motor, we could rip this thing along full power and see what kind of airflow it generated. Uh, let me know if that's something you guys want to see. For the time being, it is, it is dead, but it has proven that it does function. All the models for this design will be on my Thingiverse, so you can go over there, download them, mess around with them, do whatever you want for that. Maybe I'll fix my RC car now that I have a new controller. But that was a lot of fun. I'm glad I have this motor. If you can think of anything else you want me to do with this or with this, make sure to leave me a comment down below. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.